Hello again, people. Welcome back to HemingwayLand.com, your source, quality, affordable land. This is our preview, the weekly preview of all the properties going live on the website for tomorrow, Friday, October 22nd, 2021. Before I get started on that, people do want to apologize for last week's technical difficulties with the video. I'm not entirely certain what happened. Uh, but ironically, it was the very first time in all of the videos that we've posted on YouTube where I did not bother to listen to the video for like two or three minutes just to make sure the audio quality was fine. And uh, in not doing that, I told myself, I justified it, um, I said, uh, what's the point? There's never been a problem before. And then we posted it and I got a million comments about how the audio was bad. So... Again, my apologies, I have not been able to totally deduce what happened, though uh, <laughs> I make videos all week, uh, email responses to things, and uh, have not had a problem uh, before or since, so my suspicion is it has to do with, uh, with Dum Dum uh, not keeping his face in front of the microphone, which is what you're supposed to do when you're recording audio. I think I was moving around up and down, left and right, back and forth, and that probably explains the problem. Anyway, who knows? Number one. Number two, guys, do want to thank all the people who bought land from us this past week. It was a, uh, it was a slow week here at the North American offices of Hemingway Land. But uh, nonetheless, some buyers in Socorro County, Joan, Billy, Drew, and David, thanks to all of them. And in Luna County, uh, sold some land to Anthony and Trina. Anthony and Trina become our very first buyers from Ireland. Yes, Ireland. And by the way, people, if uh, for the, for all of our for all of our international viewers, if you will, watching the channel here, I uh, do want to let you know buying land in America very easy, no hoops to jump through. It works the same way for you as it does to an American citizen, which is name and tax address is really all we need, and then we deed the property to you. So if you've been holding off, if you've been waiting for some time, saying I've got to Google whatever the involved process is, you really don't. The process is not involved. It's that simple. Unless you live in North Korea or Myanmar. You can buy land in America. Anyway, so there you go, people. Anyway, with all that out of the way, guys, new properties going live on the week, uh, live on the website this week, as you no doubt guessed from a thumbnail of this video. Yes, ba boom! We are in Arizona, not for the first time. I will have you guys know, but for the first time in four and a half years, when we first started the business, we had a bunch of listings in uh, Arizona, Navajo County, Cochise County, and uh, it's not that I. Had any problem with that? I just thought, well, let's concentrate all our resources in one location first, and that location was New Mexico. So, four and a half years later, we are back, specifically people in Coconino County. Coconino, my new favorite county to say out loud. Anyway, not one, not two, not three, not four, but rather five new properties going live this week, guys. Uh, all of these very close to the Grand Canyon, within about a 30-minute drive of the Grand Canyon. All of them, in some way or another, uh, are RV-friendly. Uh, these first four that we have right here are part of a subdivision called the Grand Canyon subdivision uh, with these so different acreage different price points but uh, all of them are in the same subdivision where there's no HOA no covenants no restrictions there is some zoning law out there but uh, pretty permissive pretty permissive is what I would tell you the uh, fifth property right here is actually in an HOA though it is and this by the way is 36 acres uh, 44,000. This one, uh, part of an HOA, but not one that seems all too ridiculous. We do not buy and sell land in areas where they have too many rules, where the restrictions are too onerous, uh, blah, blah, blah. But the point is that all of these are available to be RV, uh, for RV living for uh, periods of time. Also, of course, you can build on them, obviously, blah, blah, blah. We'll start with the first four, and then I'll work my way back to the big one. Uh, so all of these guys are located up here roughly about an hour northwest of Flagstaff, about 45 minutes north of Williams, right here where the 180 meets the 64. Uh, the first one's in the Grand Canyon subdivision. This carved-out region on the map right here is the Grand Canyon subdivision, where both of these highways meet. Now, it should be noted, people, I did not realize this until I started doing my research on the county. All of the things that are really in the backyard of these properties, all of the things to see and do in Coconino County. I knew about the Grand Canyon, knew about that one, but uh, the sheer breadth and depth of uh, things to do out here escaped me until I started doing research. So just to quickly run through the list, obviously the Grand Canyon, number one. Lake Powell is up there, sort of at the Arizona-Utah border. Glen Canyon, very close by, also the border up there. You got not one but two forests up here, the Coconino National Forest and the Kaibab National Forest. Uh, both of these 1.8 and 1.6 million acres of land, respectively. 
Uh, so, of course, plenty of great opportunities for hunting and camping and hiking and trails and whatever people do in the woods. You get the point. But uh, as I found in my research, a lot of hunters tend to buy land out here in this region, in these two subdivisions we're talking about today, specifically because it is so close to those national forests. Additionally, guys, these properties sit in a part of Arizona that has seasons, all four seasons. So there is winter up here. There's some nice mountains up here, which, of course, means that there is skiing up here. And the Arizona Snow Bowl is also very close by to where both these properties are. Uh, the Wupatki National Monument is out here. Additionally, we've got the Sunset Crater Volcano in this region. Uh, we've got the Walnut Canyon area, the Meteor Crater. We've got the Slide Rock State Park. Mormon Lake is out here as well. The list goes on and on. The point being, guys, is if you buy land out here, you've got plenty to do, plenty to see, plenty to explore. Now, with all that said, let's zoom back in on these properties. So as noted, this Grand Canyon subdivision is all situated right here. If I go to the photo gallery on one of these listing pages, I should mention, guys, I anticipate we're going to be buying a number of properties in this region as time goes on. So I made one subdivision-specific video. I'm posting it on all of the listing pages tonight. Obviously, as the acreage increases, the price points will increase. There'll be different things to know, but the property-specific notes on each page will cover those, whatever the case. All of these properties in this subdivision, a lot of points of ingress and egress in this region. What our photographer found when he was out there is that there's a lot of gates. None of these are locked. None of these are closed. Apparently, if you do find one that is, my guess is just drive 100 yards down the road and you'll find one that isn't. But uh, gates really throughout the entirety of the subdivision. Cattle guards right here. As always, we like to term these um, kind of things uh, designed to keep the cattle in rather than the people out. So just FYI. Number one, number two, you also find some developed home sites out here, particularly the closer that you get to the highway. Uh, with this one, you can kind of see that these people have got an RV out here. There's also some kind of structure right here with solar panels on it. Most of this subdivision does not have power at the lot line. There's not power extending up and down throughout this region. There's some closer to the highway, which is why you find more structures built closer to the highway. But there are a lot of people out here who are utilizing solar panels. Um, you will also find as we go through these photos that, uh, first off, very picturesque region, very beautiful out here, number one. Number two, additionally, nice flat land, easy to park, easy to camp on, easy to build on, uh, easy to start developing, etc. cetera. And uh, as noted, some beautiful mountain views off here in the distance. We, um, it should be noted, guys, because we had so many photos taken at once, so many properties to photograph at once, we've only got about 10 images per property out here for this Grand Canyon subdivision. Nonetheless, I think you'll get the, uh, get the point with these. We'll also have a drone video up at the bottom of the page kind of going through this. All of these are zoned AR, which is Agricultural Residential Zoning, uh, which we have described up here. Uh, click this link. It'll take you to that PDF. It'll go into more detail on that. Uh, but the point is, is that this region, uh, as I mentioned, no HOAs, no covenants, no restrictions, etc. But Coconino County actually has a pretty dense zoning ordinance. Uh, but they do allow for, aside from single family residences, you can live out of uh, mobile and modular homes out here, fifth wheels, you can live out of RVs. All of those come with sort of temporary or conditional use permits. So you need to know what's involved to get permitted to do that. But the point is that it is possible. It is, in fact, very possible in this region. Anyway, with that said, guys, those are the four in the Grand Canyon subdivision. More details on the listing pages tonight once they get published. And finally, guys, the next one up is the big 36-acre property for $44,000. This one also basically in the same region. This is the subdivision I just talked about. This next one is called South Rim Ranch, and it sits up here in this area. Again, about 45 minutes north of Williams, about an hour northwest of Flagstaff. Um, but this is the South Rim Ranch subdivision and the subject property that we're talking about today. So it's right off North South Rim Ranch Road. Pay attention to that labeling. Anyway, so uh, this is the entrance to the subdivision right here. As noted, there is an HOA involved with this. I do not like to uh, list properties because I can't sell them that have very strict HOAs with a lot of rules. From what I saw, from what I read, this one does not. Uh, it does, however, seem like they do a lot of work on road maintenance, which, of course, is very important in a region like this where, again, seasons, winter, snow, rain, so on and so forth. Uh, but these roads are very well maintained. This is the road frontage along the property. That's about $180 a year in annual dues. That seems to be what that goes toward because I don't see them per se developing the region a whole lot. Uh, some utilities are extended throughout the region, but the closest ones to this subject property are roughly about two miles up the road. So uh, not terribly close, probably the kind of thing that you'd want to utilize solar on if you do decide to uh, develop. 
Uh, it should also be noted, of course, that uh, despite the fact this is in an HOA, they do actually allow for RVing. Uh, on the property for about three months at a time. Both of these subdivisions I'm talking about here, uh, you can get, well, with the first one, you can get permitted. With the second one, you're just allowed to uh, be out there in an RV for about 100 days out of the year. Uh, that's like the whole summer. I think that's really great. I think if you're the type of person who you spend your summers kind of touring America in the back of an RV and uh, you're looking for places to camp and to park, to have your own land like this, this close to not only the Grand Canyon, but to the 7 million other things that I just mentioned, uh, I think that's invaluable. So particularly property out here that's as pretty as this. Uh, obviously, these photos become a little visually redundant at a certain point. Good amount of vegetation on the property, but also some good cutout areas if you do decide to build. Um, as I mentioned earlier, these tend to be, this region, as I have found in my research, tends to be popular with hunters because of its proximity to those two national parks. Uh, whatever the case, if you go to the drone images that we have down here in the gallery, you can see what I was talking about as far as developed regions of the property, some cutout regions, uh, easy to park, easy to camp, easy to develop, so on and so forth. With this one, of course, this is one of the bigger properties, so we will have a drone video covering the entirety of the property so you can get a better sense of the exact size excuse me, size, shape, location, general footprint, general uh, um, terrain surroundings of the land out here. But nonetheless, very picturesque region here in northern Arizona. I really, really, really like all of these properties. The locations are great, number one. And number two, uh, particularly, you know, the permissive nature of what I'm finding with what you can do out there uh, is a big advantage, particularly for all of you who call all the time asking you know, how long can I RV on a property? What can I build out there? Can I build a tiny home? Can I build a shipping container home, etc.? cetera? Uh, these properties pretty much all fit the bill in one way or another. Anyway, so with all that said, guys, I will let you uh, watch the, uh, the videos on the respective listing pages, read the property specific notes, view the photo galleries, watch the drone videos, etc., to better educate yourself on these. But uh, point being, we're in Arizona now, guys, and we're going to have more properties coming up soon in other regions of Arizona, and particularly as we go into 2022. So with all that said, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your attention spans, and uh, we will see you in next week's video.